And we are live. Wow. Hail. I, I feel Hail so Rob. Good. Yeah. Hail, Hail, Hail Clint. Hail Chad. It, it feels good, doesn't it? Oh, I, I, you know, I feel like I'm somebody. <laughs> I'm no longer the, nobody. I was we're, no longer we're a couple nobody. of somebodies, you know. It's, I mean, it's all it's all relative, but <laughs> we we rate at least as somebody's hail Randy. Here, I can even do this. Look at this fancy stuff. This <laughs> Randy in the chat. Hail, what's going on, Very brother? Nice. Randy's gonna be like, yep, absolutely. No, anyone in here? <laughs> Randy's been plugging plugging uh, campaigns on Twitter like nobody's business, and man, he can't say how much you appreciate that. That is. It's oh, freaking yeah. awesome. So every little bit helps and uh, getting the word out in comics gate helps, but happy Thursday night, everybody. Uh, this is me and Rob's. We did one show. We did one show with Jimmy, I think. And that was mm -hmm. kind of like a little dipping our, our toes in the pond. Were we closing something out or, or starting uh, something? Was it my close out? It might have been. It and, might well, have it might have even been Jimmy's closeout weekend, but I think we did it on, like, it wasn't the closeout night. Yeah, think, it was a little bit of both, yeah. Because my, yeah. my closeout never – I was supposed to do a midnight to three closeout and then lightning storms, and then I lost the internet anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> You I and your lightning shit. storm. So if we lose Rob tonight, it's lightning storms again. Yeah, Florida. I live in Florida, so unfortunately that's the, the downside. If, if we lose me, it's from dehydration because it, it's it's 80 <laughs> degrees today, and I'm actually I'm I'm trying to do a diet, and I I've been semi successful so far. I've lost nine pounds, so I, I'm proud of that. But it's miserable because I haven't eaten anything. So if Dude, I just like do it that way, you know that oh, right? it's working. Like I've been I've been living off a of slim fast and diet Mountain Dew, man. Okay, okay. But you're lo you're you're losing muscle and you're losing water. You're not losing the real stuff. You're not losing the the your body to burn. The don't fat. don't ruin it for me, Rob. Any, you, any any any. Well, I am exercising too. So oh oh, you are exercising. Yeah yeah, I'm exercising. Okay, buddy. I'm doing I'm doing like I eat a dinner. I'm doing the, okay, like, okay. the slim okay. fast. I did that. I did yep. that once. Slim fast that does work. I did it before and I lost twenty pounds probably like seven or eight years ago. I lost like 80 pounds. Oh, 80. Two, two, Holy. 80 pounds in 2000, uh, 2003. Oh, that's uh, incredible. I did, I did slim fast, slim fast, and then a, a normal dinner. Yep. Um, but I didn't know why I was lactose intolerant. So I really wasn't even doing slim fast. I was just drinking water, drinking okay, water, yep. and then, you know, having a dinner where yeah. I still was eating stuff that I didn't know I was lactose intolerant. So if I ate macaroni and cheese, I'd be like, man, why am I, why am I hitting the bathroom again? Oh, so, yeah. And I was working out really hard. I'd work out for like an hour and a half on the bike before I go into cross gen. Okay. And then I would lift weights and do the treadmill at night. Yeah. So, you know, I probably put my body into like survival, survival mode. With yeah. that. But I was, I was still like Andy, Andy actually would look at me every day and go, well, you're losing weight, but you got a little bit of tone. But how 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 much are you working out? What do you go? <laughs> You've got no muscle, dude. You got no well, muscle. And, and <laughs> the thing to that. me, the thing to me is, you you can start adding on the muscle later on, but but trimming down the weight to begin with to me is the key part because it 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 just makes you feel better, and then you'll you, maybe be more prone to exercise. Once you take that. And the, the other thing is cardio. Like I've got terrible knees and ankles. Mm -hmm. So like to take some of that weight off and then yeah. be able to do cardio without the, the weight on my knees. But Well, for me, I'm the exact opposite. If I'm lifting weights and I'm working hard, then I realize that my diet changes because I'll go, well, why would I want to just, you know, I, I just worked. I just killed myself all week. Why would I want to? eat a bag of chips. Oh, exactly. You know, yeah. You know, I, that, so it kind of, it kind of, it's a, kind of a combination where it helps tweak my diet yeah. uh, just because I'll be like, you know, there'll be those times where I'm like, yeah, yeah, dude, eat some vegetables or have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Don't eat a bunch of shit. Right now. Yeah. So um, that, that's how I've always worked it. And it's not like I'm like 
lean and mean, but um, I, but no, I, I mean, 80 pounds, yeah. 80 pounds is impressive. Like, oh, yeah. well, that, that was, that was forever ago. That was when I was, uh, I went from 280. My highest was, and it was, to be honest, it was really hard to keep the weight on. I was eating really shitty when I was at 287. Mm -hmm. um, I got to, down to maybe like 187 at the oh, most. Wow. Um, and then um, now I'm at like uh, 235, but uh, I had some uh, um, hormonal problems too going on there. So yeah. now that I fixed all that, now I actually, when I lift weights, I actually gain muscle. Oh, wow. So okay. I'm kind of happy kind of where I am. I guess yeah. I could definitely still cut like 20 or 30 pounds, but I'm not going to crank it on a treadmill or anything like that. No, so, yeah. yeah. So anyways, we got the dieting stuff out of the way, but we're, yeah, everybody's trying to, you know, everybody's trying to be healthier, but. <laughs> Dude, we're starting to feel the pains as we get older. Oh, God, yeah. No, it's, it's, starting to catch it's, up. it's the truth. It catches up with you fast. But yeah. Um, we have another... one big topic, right? We got, we got the, it's the comic book websites. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned, I, the, the other one that I come up with is just kind of a, uh, I, I was kind of brainstorming right at the end. Yeah, I don't know if I can show it on YouTube, but the thing I really want to put up, do you know who that mm -hmm. Janelle, uh, Janelle Monet is? She's been in a bunch of movies. She's a, 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 a African-American singer, movie star, actress kind of thing. She launched her like new um, album or whatever. And there's like a bunch of top, well, top, she's got like a wet t-shirt on coming out mm -hmm. of the pool and stuff to promote the thing. Well, good and for her. If, if you, yeah, if you've seen her, you'd recognize her because she's been in, she's been in TV commercials and like soda pop ads and everything. But I was like, they're always pushing this girl and it's like, she finally figured it out. She's just like, show your boobs and you'll sell stuff. So isn't that weird? Isn't it weird how it seems like they, they'll they pick one person? Yeah, well, yeah, they've, they've been pushing her for years, I remember yeah. seeing her. And she's been in some stuff. She's a beautiful, beautiful girl. So, I, I, was, I But I don't think I can show the video on YouTube because I'm sure. like, it'll... Yeah, there's something about you only can show it for a second. Or yeah. you, can, you can show a still or whatever. But Like, like yeah. in her videos all over Twitter and stuff. But I think Twitter and YouTube have different rules. But the, yeah, the other topic I wanted to kind of get on just because – Guardians of the Galaxy just came out. I can't remember if you said you'd seen it or not. No, I haven't watched it. Okay. Especially but you, after you've seen the you first guys, two, right? Yeah, and I didn't really like this. I thought the second one had its funny parts. Yeah. But dude, it was all they did was argue with each other. Yeah. And, that's and then kinda... had, had nothing to do with Thanos. Yeah. And it was really like, oh, Star Lord has powers and now he doesn't. Yeah. So it was like it was this self-contained. Nobody gives a shit. Nothing really happens. Yeah. You know how it's always the the characters need to evolve in yeah. a story. There, there was, yeah, there was no character progression, and that's yeah. kind of what I want to talk about. Because James Gunn, as the writer, like yeah. my, my concern is Superman. Like I love Superman. That's that's what I'm interested in, and looking at basically kind of prejudging James Gunn is how he'll handle Superman based off of what he's done with the Guardians of the Galaxy. And, and maybe you can remind me of this. Did he write the second Suicide Squad movie, or did he just direct it? Because I think he wrote it, too. I think he did. I think he did write it because it was very off the wall. Well, and to you me, know, like, to me, like it's the same tone as the Guardians of the Galaxy. You, you got an oddball group of characters Yes. that don't get along they argue with each other throughout the entire movie um it, it, it it's in tone in in writing of the characters it's very similar to the guardians of the galaxy movie and to me it like like i'll, I'll give him credit that he's an entertaining writer mm -hmm. but i don't know that that fits with superman at all like the way he, he writes characters. All I can think of is is that he's going to do a very traditional Superman, and everyone else around Superman will be the off the wall. Like the villain can be like, because you know yeah. how he, uh, James Gunn really likes doing characters that are assholes. Yeah. So the villain, or maybe one of the other characters, can be like a total raging asshole. The mm -hmm. way like Peacemaker was an asshole in Suicide Squad. Right. Um, so I'm thinking um, maybe that's what we'll see is we'll see the James Gunn 
because like I mean, or the the villains in yeah. the characters around Superman. That would yeah, probably be the best scenario. He's shown enough of what he does well, and what he does well is write the jerk, oddball, off the wall yeah. characters. So yeah, maybe that's that's his best bet is. He writes. He writes a traditional Superman, but then all the characters around him are kind of this off-putting yeah. and weird things. And Superman is kind of above it all. I, God, I hope so. I hope so. But you know, uh, the first thing we're going to do is because I forget to do this, and then then we'll, <laughs> well, you and me will bullshit for an hour, and we won't even touch on them. So I, I actually put a specific note here. Let's let's look at our campaign. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah the, the whole reason we're on YouTube in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's start out with looking at the campaigns, and, and uh, I want to go through Death Raider here first. But uh, yeah, it's uh, I I get I once I start yakking, it's I'm so easily sidetracked that uh, it's probably a good idea to start with the campaigns, and we can uh, after that we can uh, go through some other uh, uh, topics that I got here, but. Um, I'll play the video first, and then um, I got the I got the touch screen, so I can like scroll down and zoom in, and I'll just let you uh, kind of walk us through your campaign here. But over right. sixteen thousand in demand here for Death Raider. Um, let me. And um, if if uh, you lose me for a second, because it just happened again, I actually changed out my um, HDMI. I didn't change the cord, but I changed the input wh- where it goes into my PC. And it still did the flash where it goes through the DVI VGA. Whatever. Well, I've got it pulled up, and I've got it pulled up in here, so I'll just run it through mine. So, yeah, yeah. So because so, also we... my screen goes blank, and then I come back. But I do oh, have my okay. iPad open so that I can I can keep along follow along if, if that happens again. Okay, okay. Well, we'll wing it, and yeah. if I lose you, we'll, we'll just just make sure you come back. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, dude. Well, yeah, well, yeah. It's just the monitor. It does a weird blink. Obviously, yeah. I thought I fixed it today, and it's um. It, to be honest, the only time it's doing it is when I'm on live stream. So oh, weird. yeah, yeah. So I'll have to do some research and try to figure out what it is. But uh, yes, Randy, I did. Between the last couple, actually, this week, because I was really not on. Um, I didn't do much YouTube for the last three weeks, and I. I I, had, I was still doing uh, pontificators, but I think we skipped. We skipped a couple of weeks with pontificators. Mm-hmm. So I was, you know, because I uh, just trying to get back to my scheduled deadline with Death Raider and my page output. Um, I had missed between weather and internet. I had missed like the Kings and Kings and, and some of that stuff. So I think part of it is me just kind of coming back into that routine, which I still haven't figured out. I know that um, if Clint and I can stay consistent, I want this to be one of where yeah. I'm doing it every week, you know, yeah. and the ones that last like three or four hours, I have to definitely like pull back because it's, it takes too much time out of. Uh, yeah. You know, that's, it's a three or four hour show. It, it's, it's hard to, to, to and, do And that. everybody, yeah. And everybody sees the artwork I'm doing. It's yeah. time consuming in the first place. So. To take four hours out of uh, a Monday, it's almost impossible. So, yeah. the, the well, here, I'll, I'll shoot schedule. up your trailer here, and we'll give that a, a watch. Whenever I see this trailer, I'm always thinking like, oh, it still has the 100 page, which the 100 pages was a uh, uh, stretch goal we never reached. And I'm always thinking how there was only like six pages of artwork and a couple of pages of coloring, page, images had been colored. So like, that's why the trailer is what it is. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I think it's still, it, 
it's still it tells the it's story. an awesome trailer i love the trailer and i mean yeah we, oh yeah jimmy did a great job and it's a good it shows the flavor of the book yeah so, and realistically that's kind of the whole point of crowdfunding is you're giving people you're doing a little bit of the work so you can show people what they can get if you can mm-hmm. You know, get, yeah. get the funding to do it. So, like, you're doing it the right way, no doubt about that. Yeah, I like to get to the artwork. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, but yeah, covers. this is. Thank you. This is the this is the first cover. This is the first. This is literally is the first image that I I did with like I was uh, with Anna. Uh, it wasn't the first Death Raider image, but uh, the first Death Raider image was actually him jumping. Uh, which oh, is kind yeah. of a that's a callback to um, uncanny x-men 268 it was me trying to remember how jim lee did kept america jumping at the ninjas jumping at the ninjas i know yeah, what you're yeah. about and, exactly. and i really and i really like i did that and i wanted to do a double page spread with the panels where oh yeah where death raider is fighting the um the, the robot character which they are yep. ninjas but they are samurais so i really kept close to that but i, I just i i never really got the um as i was trying to do the storytelling it just never felt to it didn't fit jim jim does you know it just didn't you know without because i didn't want to just look at the 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 spread and just mimic it oh yeah yeah. i I wanted to do it as as like a flavor of memory and i i never got i i kind of got close but i you know i ended up with turning it into like a big double page spread instead where it's just a so it, it never really, it never really felt the same or even looked the same. And, and that happens a lot when you're storytelling is like you got some, you got an idea in your head, but then it like okay, the story it doesn't act, you know, what you, what you had doesn't quite work, and you 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 always tweaking it as you go, especially when you're artist writer when you're doing yeah. both kind of, yeah. There's there's a lot of fluidity in how you're going to tell the story, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I I definitely think that probably Jim was probably when he was putting those together, he was kind of editing Chris Claremont's. Yeah. You know, I guess plot. I, I would yeah. say just the way, like there was a lot of visual Jim Lee storytelling going off mm-hmm. of Chris Fast Claremont cuts. loose plots. Like this is what's mm-hmm. happening. This is the backstory. Like Chris, you give him enough flavor. Yes. And, you know, I, I think they were kind of working the old school Marvel style, which mm-hmm. I mean, the results were, <laughs> The results were highly impressive, but oh yeah, yeah. Well, not a lot of people do that anymore. I mean, right now it seems like the writers kind of have editorial control. Yeah, yeah, they're all control freaks, and they don't allow the artist that freedom to kind of. And I mean, Claremont was great, and he he was come up with these awesome ideas and all this melodrama and like the the soap opera aspect to it, but still making it an action adventure thing. And I think that's probably the genius of Claremont is intertwining the soap opera aspects of the storytelling with comics, but still maintaining that high level of action adventure, you know? Well, he said that when, especially when it was a a regular artist was coming on board, he would say that he would write to that artist's strengths. Yeah. And And, that's, and and, man, working at, uh, especially at DC, I would always get that vibe. Because of, you you never get intros with the writers, almost never. That most of the time, that writer had written the story six months ago. Oh yeah, and, and they were finally getting around to putting an art team together to work on the yeah. book. You know, I just, um, I you know, obviously as an inker, I wasn't you know privy to uh, like if there was back and forth with the the writer, but I don't. I, I most of the projects I worked on, I think it was the exact opposite. I think it was just the yeah. answer was just like. Hey, let me just you know slug through this and get it to the inker, and then the colors gets it, and you know yeah. the book yeah, ships. We all get paid. Yep, yeah, that tail end part of it, it's all deadline, deadline, deadline. You don't need to worry about plot points or this or that. <laughs> it's like ink the pages out as fast as you can, so we can give them the colorist. We yeah, can, yeah, it's it's all deadline, deadline crunch at that. Yeah, when you mentioned writing to the artist's strengths, that also reminded me of Jeff Loeb. Like, yeah. like that, like, and I mean, every top artist in the nineties, Maduri era, Jim Lee, obviously with Hush and everything, Ian Churchill, all those guys, like Jeff Loeb knew how to write to what the artist's strengths were and give them 
give them the freedom to like make the book look awesome. Like there, there there's not that many writers like that anymore that like realize oh. the artist oh, yeah. is part of the team. It's yeah. not all talking heads, you know? Well, um, one of my um, bosses that I worked with after DC, I had to keep telling him, I, I kept telling him, you're not the writer. I mean, you no. are the writer. You're not the director. The right, penciler yeah. is the director. And he would always, you know, he would say, hey, you know, the penciler's doing this, the penciler's doing that. And I'd be like, because that's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed, I go, you can give him ideas of how you want the shots to be done on the page, but he's going to decide. Yeah. And did, he did not like that at all. No, oh, no. He, he, well, did not, he wanted to be the writer, director. He just needed the pencil to, to draw what he had. Yep. Just, and there's a lot of ego involved. And not, you're not always going to work with a bunch of guys that like get it. You're going to, you're going to want to work with, with guys that are like, I'm the star. And yeah. you're here to like do what I tell you to do. Yeah. Oh, even Bagley on Justice League, he said that the writer would keep asking for, you know, action in the background, stuff happening in the midground, and then he still wanted expressions. Or a character that's in the background, he wants expressions on their faces. And he's like, You can't. That's not one panel, dude. No, you just, yeah. you just explained three panels. You just yeah. described three panels of the book. You there you're working with a guy panel. who doesn't know how to actually write comic books. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and it was uh you you just like this is Mark Bagley who's been oh, around yeah. the block like four times and no, no he's, it backwards and forwards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, as as art would say, he's one of the best action. Yeah storyteller and he's getting stuck business. with a guy who's trying to tell him to do multiple things plus expressions in one panel yeah and yeah it, like you're banging your head against the wall yeah Bagley's like dude he, he would tell me he's like hey man he goes sorry he goes all the new pages they're all a bunch of long shots he goes i know for it's action pages so that's cool for original art but he goes there's there's barely any there's no close-ups he goes there's barely any close-ups where you know you, you it's get a cool phase of like it's a team book, and you wrote every character into every panel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or uh, two or three characters in every panel. Yeah, that's that's the scene. That's the way they have an extreme you... close up of Superman as he's lifting a car, and Batman and Flash and Wonder Woman standing around and looking at Ah, and Superman has a look of bewilderment <laughs> on his face it's as like, Green oh, Lantern <laughs> stops a roof from falling. Yeah. And none of those characters are in the book. Justice yeah. League was none of those characters. It was Nightwing as Batman, because Batman was dead at the time. Oh, these Superman are all was Superman was busy with that horrific um, bottle of Krypton or um, oh, okay. that storyline, which was Greg Rucka, and it was is the artwork was as stale and generic as Kryptonians oh, in the God. story. Um, and then Wonder Woman, she couldn't be in it because Wonder Woman was doing whatever dumb Wonder Woman st story that nobody read. And I remember just going, so we get Justice League without Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. And, and Bagley, Bagley's like, dude, he goes, this is why I came to DC and they're not giving me what I asked for. The whole reason he signed a contract. Hey, <laughs> Dinner guess where, break. Guess where Bagley went after Justice League? Right back to Marvel as fast as he could. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. It's actually a cover, but I appreciate that, dude. I, appreciate I don't that understand why Andrew is getting breaks, though. Yeah, like, shouldn't he just be coloring constantly? I, I, I didn't think the colorist Scott breaks. It's just get pages done. Yeah, and, shouldn't you have a PB and J sandwich um, in front of your computer to eat while you still color? Four hours, on, four Andrew? hours of sleep, one one bathroom break, and then a PB and J sandwich. Yeah, yeah, that's what the jar is for. And no Chinese, no Chinese break. food. Yeah, yeah, I, I miss Andrew. We used to we used to chat um, a bunch. Well, he's um, is highly overrated. <laughs> when we were both at DC, I'm no longer at DC. So. <laughs> PB and J was lunch. Yes. Oh. I, I like to have that as like an, a late snack. It keeps me from eating potato chips or cookies. It's it's just been slim fast and diet mode and do all day. Oh, dude, 
I've got the, my green lights on, and I'm drinking uh, green Diet Mountain Dew. Nice. So, Diet yeah. Mountain Dew, man. Diet Mountain Dew is the bomb. Because it, it still it, tastes good, but it's the low zero sugar calories and all that stuff. It's a great yeah. pick me up for live streams too. I I can live off some Diet Mountain Dew. Ooh, I kind of have chicken nuggies, chicken. Oh, and red wine. That's fan. Wow. It's fancy over at the dollhouses, man. That's too fancy for me. I don't drink that's, wine. So. That's good. That's good eating. I'd be drinking Pepsi with that chick. Those oh, chicken nuggies. Got it. <laughs> I miss I miss Pepsi so bad. <laughs> Pepsi or well, no Pepsi, no sugar. You know. So, the, so the, let the me let label. me ask you this, Rob, a logistics yes. question. You're doing T-shirts, mm -hmm. so are you? Are you sh like how are you shipping? Like you're going to ship the T-shirt separately in like bags, kind of thing, as opposed to the Gemini mailers for the comics, or I I just went with what other people had done. So. Yeah. Um, they are uh, the t-shirts are separate and there's like there's separate shipping for the t-shirts which um especially because i added it so so late and you know right. I mean, the, the book was in demand before i added the t-shirts yep. um but it'll just be um my prerogative of you know yep. like if someone because i'll just you know you look at the list and you're like oh like i know andy andy bought a shirt and Andy yep. bought a book so I'll probably have bigger boxes just to put both of those in it for, you know, cause I, you know, I like to be um, pessimistic. Yeah. Uh, the t-shirts have to sell a certain amount before we can, you know, we can actually do the t-shirts. So, oh yeah, sure. You know? Um, so if the t-shirts don't, don't hit the mark, I'll have to refund everybody. Oh, okay. Which, I see. Yeah. But if they do hit the mark, then I can look at it and go, Okay, how many people just bought T-shirts? How many people bought? And I assume almost everyone who buys a T-shirt is going to buy the, um, buy the, the book, book too. Book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For and, sure. and then I'll uh, just get a, a bigger box, ship them together, and then yep. uh, I can do a shipping refund if there's you know the, so that I'm not overcharging people on shipping. Oh just, yeah, you know I'll just put that to the side because now obviously if I ended if if this campaign I was selling I had four thousand backers. And, right. Yeah. You know, there's four thousand books to ship, and there's a thousand t-shirts to ship. That yeah. would be like, hey, Rob, what do you what do you mean? That that's gonna get crazy. Yeah. But I'm not there the with the smaller numbers. There. Yeah, it's it's a little bit more manageable, and yeah, you can mm -hmm. work your way through it. And yeah, look, so it, I can do does, those things. Yeah, it does look like we got a few more people in the chat. Uh, drop in and say hi, hail CG and hail chat. Thanks, thanks everybody for uh, showing up and hanging out. Uh, my channel's kind of just building now. Me and Rob are planning on doing this on a more regular basis. Uh, we both do pontificators on Wednesday. I think uh, Thursday now we're going to keep trying to yeah. kind of do this. And we're going to like really stick to comics. Um, yeah. What's going on in CG? What's going on at the big two? All the, you know, superhero movies and stuff like that. Um, a lot of people cover a lot of different bases, but like we want to just keep it fun and real really kind of focus on comics is our plan here um we got That's our campaigns we yep. yeah we got our campaigns death raider and my campaign superiors but uh yeah if you're hanging out uh say hi in the chat so we can see you and uh like i said i'm trying to build this channel up i just hit 200 uh, subscribers so um Congrats. if you're new here if you uh and you haven't subscribed yet if you can hit that subscribe button and also hit the like button that'll really help the channel kind of grow and build uh really appreciate you guys uh showing up um we're both uh hardcore cg guys with our, our campaigns uh death raider is in demand right now and uh superiors is uh going on the last three or four days of its first 30 campaign so uh the first 30 uh days ends this weekend so uh Ooh. We're yeah, we're pushing, we're pushing past twelve thousand, uh, pushing for thirteen. So uh, appreciate all the uh, help and attention and backers that we're getting here through Comic Skate, and it, every little bit really helps with the campaign. So, oh yeah, it guys. definitely yeah. The the production, the printing, you know, um, it's like I uh, people were giving me a little bit of uh, um, flack about. Uh, well, you know, you guys go in demand. So, yeah. You know, like when you're like, so the campaign doesn't really end. And my answer to that was, well, no, but 
you do set up how much the production is. You know, like if yeah. if, if Death Raider ended up doing two hundred fifty thousand, um, the calling would be different. You know what I mean? Like there'd be yeah. there'd be all these different. You know, obviously there'd be the stretch goals that were hit. So there'd be uh, all the other things I want to do, trading cards and you know monthly download and all that other kind of thing. But um, you know it, that before you get to in demand, that really that sets what what the book is going to be. Because I honestly I wanted to do a card stock. I love those. I love cardstock covers. You know, I love oh, the, yeah. the traditional, the old school, like the 48 page, you know, um, like Return of the Dark Knights, the format of book, you know, I'm doing perfect bound. So that's, that's kind of like it, but you know, the, the, it's still not the cardstock cover. So, you know, and there's yeah. a, there's a lot of different things that can happen and, and do happen because of the straight what the campaign is and then within demand in demand is you know that literally is trying to pick up backers while we finish the book and then it ships so andrew's challenging me i was oh i, was, I, know. I, I almost I forgot that. i was even going to attempt this but i'm gonna i'm gonna try and draw as we'll keep we'll keep bs in but i'm gonna try and draw as fast as i freaking can because what to try and not make it slow but Oh, look at that. Well, um, I know that um, uh, one of our loose topics was the uh, comic book websites and how, yeah, one, yeah, like for CBR, I actually have a CBR tab open, but while you draw, I can just talk about CBR. Sure. And um, I mean, I can keep talking too, but yeah, like my, my, my original ideas, part of it is how downhill they've gone from yeah. what they used to be. But also part of it is there there's not the excitement. There's not there's not uh the energy that used to exist, you know, no. twenty years no. ago. There, there's not like like they don't they're they're dying because they don't have anything to talk about. You well, know it, it's also almost like they're they're following a corporate line. Right. Um, when I when I scroll down and I look at it and when I click on uh, the articles. It's not like Todd McFarlane's doing this, Jim is right. doing that, Dave Finch is doing this. It's yeah. oh look, this is what's happening in Amazing Spider-Man. This is what's happening in the latest Wonder Woman. Uh, it's almost a. Um, I know that there was always a big rumor that when the Image guys left Marvel, Marvel and DC heads both agreed. No more ever. They would never yeah. push artists in, to, in, into superstardom the way they did for Jim Lee and, and Tavern Farland and Rob right. and all those guys because they just they felt like uh, they lost too much control over the artists because the artists gained too much power. So they yeah. never want to do that again. And when you look at that CBR website, it feels like CBR is playing the same freaking game. Yeah. Like, and I. I grew up. I was a teenager during those days. I, I was the guy buying, you know, two, three copies of uh, New Mutants 100, and, you know, all, <laughs> you know, and, and a couple oh, yeah. copies of X Men number one and Spider Man number one and all that stuff. I helped make those guys millionaires. Oh, <laughs> I also was. We very all, we excited. all did. Yes, very excited for the industry, but the, I also knew who all the artists were. I followed all those guys. I was oh, super yeah. excited to go into the comic book stores and get the books by those guys. Now it's like Marvel and DC. They want to promote the brand. They want to promote the comics, the comic brand. But yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, dude, is Dave Finch even doing covers since he's left DC? I don't, I like, I mean, I, I, I don't go into comic book stores anymore. Yeah, because no. And I'm always um, I think he's doing his own thing, but like I haven't heard much about that either. It's like it's so easy to fall out of it. Um, I, I've seen like what I find what I find creators doing is when they're posting on Twitter. Like that's the only time that like I hear something going on is if a creator is posting on Twitter. And yeah. if that doesn't happen, I don't really know what they're doing because. Again, I don't really follow the sites anymore because there's never anything that's really that interesting on it anymore. Well, you can tell that even if they talk about creators on uh, the comic book websites, what they're what it is is because 
um, Chuck Dixon even said this. Chuck Dixon would give for years the advice: if you want to be a writer, you either become if you want to be a comic book writer, you either become an editor, or yeah. you start with interviews and you start interviewing oh, professional writers. Sure. Yeah, you and I know the people in the biz kind of thing. Yes. Well, I th I think that's what those websites are. Those websites yeah. they're going to just kiss the writer's ass because they all want to write comic books. Yeah. And well, if well, the artists are listed, they're listed at the end of the story. Like, oh, hey, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And you're exactly. like, are you shit me, man? It, it, comic book, it's visual first. It's it's writing second. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, I remember the, the wizard days. All those wizard guys ended up being editors in comics after long enough. I what, mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they might not be there anymore after the there's been the multiple cleansing things, but... But for Is a Wizards while, still like, around? Uh, Randy, do you know if Wizards even around anymore? No, Wiz Wizards was gone for a long time. That was okay. Yeah, he was at the uh, Garib. Seamus. Seamus, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he uh, he he bailed out when the when the getting was good. Just you know, well, those he he guys, tried to start his uh, his own MMA organization. Is that what he went into, or what he tried dude, to do? Yeah, him? dude, yeah. I was at, I was at, um, I think it was Chicago. It was a Chicago Wizard show, and because I don't, I, I never did like a, a ton of the big shows all across the country. Right. And I went yeah. for that one, and I remember, or was it San Diego? Oh, you know what? No, I, I know. And they had, I the, know what the, you're they had the about. MMA ring and had a, a bunch of the MMA fighters. Right I remember that. It was, it was Chicago. Stuff. Chicago had it was it for Chicago. sure. Yep. Okay. And I remember going, what? What this is this? This is weird. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, why is this at a, at a convention? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. They were trying to use uh, use their Wizard World stuff to get like their own uh, their own MMA thing going on because like they were they were kind of, I mean, basically kind of emulate or copy the UFC. Yeah. Yeah. But can you and, imagine, I mean, even if you don't pay much, how much? They still cost. Oh yeah. You, do that. Yeah. Uh, you want to start a brand new fighting organization and all you've got is wizard money. You know, I yeah. know they had other backers, but at least um, there's that company uh, strike force. They had made tens of millions of dollars on all the MMA t-shirts that they sold because MMA went from nobody gave a crap about it. And then ultimate ultimate fighter started. Oh yeah. Yeah. Remember tap out. Uh, I, I saw an interview with tap out and those guys were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was the season finale of Ultimate Fighter, and we got so many orders that uh, the next oh, day, the office space next door, we immediately rented or leased out, and we were uh, sledgehammering the walls because we we're like, holy crap, we need twice as much space. <laughs> Not in a week or in, in six months. We need it tomorrow. Yeah. And that was so, the t-shirt. That was just the t-shirt company, right? Yes, that was just tap out. That was just because, like, yeah, tap out. Like their t-shirts were everywhere for mm -hmm. a while, and so was uh, Strike Force. Strike yep. Force, that, or like that Dana White has talked about it. How like, like that finale of the first season of Ultimate Fighter, everything was riding on that. That's why, like, they like talk about um, the two guys that ended up fighting for the championship, and one of them just died about a year or so ago yeah um, his 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 um i think his expectations always were a lot more than what he could realistically get out of yeah. mma and his his fighting and i think he was always behind the gun on like you know him and his wife were always money trouble oh, oh and sure drama and stuff but but like dana white has said is like there there wouldn't be a ufc if it hadn't been for that fight, because no, like that no, fight yeah. turned that fight turned everything around for the UFC. That got them the attention. They've been trying to sell that to everybody, and nobody had been paying attention until they did that fight on mm -hmm. Spike Spike, which no longer yeah. exists anymore. Yeah, which exactly. is kind of funny. But no, yeah, dude, he's like yeah. Dana White said that he told everybody. He said, "This is our last ditch." Yeah. At at UFC becoming something like he yeah. told the coaches, he told everybody like, 
hey man, everybody give it your all because yeah, if this, this doesn't is... work, we're we're closing shop. Right. Because uh, the Fertitta brothers had already spent like twenty four million dollars on the UFC trying to get it going. Yep, and it's like you can only dump money into it for so long before you kind of to give it up. But yeah, that that's what made the difference. And uh... well, that's when I started watching it. I yeah, oh yeah, I watched. I remember that show. whole. I remember that whole first season. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of the guys. Uh, wasn't it? Picture... Uh, wasn't it Matt Hughes? Uh, no, Matt Hughes was one pounds? of the coaches later on. Yeah. It was, oh man, it's, and then I and then it makes me realize how long ago it was. Oh, I was mean, it Randy Couture? Was Randy no, Couture? No. I met no. Randy Couture at San Diego one time, and he was super cool. Oh, no, wow. it, it's two of the smaller name guys hmm. that fought in the championship. And uh, if I googled it, I could find it, but it, I mean, it does it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. But yeah. That fight because it was light heavyweight though. The, the, yeah, the ultimate yeah, they were both the, like I think 180, 195 or something. Yeah, pounder, yeah, so. yeah. That um, yeah, because a uh, Forrest, he was one of the guys that was in the Ultimate Fighter. He's oh yeah, the, Forrest yeah. Griffin. That's who I'm Forrest thinking Griffin. of. Yeah. And he's uh, he's uh, 205. He's a light okay. And yeah, wh- so whoever the coaches were, the coaches were also. Oh, it was Chuck Liddell was one of the coaches. Okay, he was one Chuck of the coaches is, that first season. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Because he's light heavyweight, so if it's Chuck, then it had to be Randy Couture, because they were, you know, they oh, were, yeah. uh, they yeah. were gonna have a big pay per view. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying that they were in the. Okay. Oh no, no, no they were the coaches. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes a lot more sense then. Yeah. So yeah, yeah those those two were the coaches, and then the contestants. Yeah, it was a uh, force one and. Do you remember the other guy's name? I always forget forget the other guy's the name. The other guy's name, he's the one who passed away. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. died. Yeah. Uh For, Forrest Griffin and oh, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I'm, I'm yeah, I'll never my remember. memory's gotten worse and worse as time's gone on. Uh, Forrest still I uh Forrest, I mean, yeah, Forrest ago, is still around. I mean he's I don't think he's fighting anymore. No, he's no, still, he retired, but he's fully retired. Uh, he was still making jokes. He still had the damn Prius car or whatever the hell that was part of the grand prize. <laughs> he said he's never washed it, but he still drives it around all the time. Well, he's smart if he held on to that money because, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. I don't know that those, I mean, they, I mean, they had more fights, but I don't think either one of those guys ever turned into like, you know, a guy that no. was like a big, big money maker, I don't think. No, Force, I don't think was ever champ. Um, he had some big fights, but um, yeah. th- this was before those guys were getting a million dollars or two million dollars or three or four million dollars. Yeah, this, yeah, this, this was, was, yeah, yeah, this was still the, the you know, the big money is hundreds, hundreds of thousands of yeah. dollars. Yeah, which you know, <laughs> I, I get punched in the head for a hundred grand, no problem. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but it was also, it was um, when they could still have sponsors because oh, there's okay. a guy that I, I followed in, um, who was a podcaster and he said that he always made more money with sponsorships, but he was also a business major in college. So he was really good at chasing after sponsorships, mm-hmm. but uh, he said he made more money in sponsorships than he ever did actually fighting for the UFC. So, <laughs> well, and I he, mean, that's, I mean, in, in any business, you'll find that the marketing, the advertising, that's where the real money is. Uh Oh, what are we yeah. doing? <laughs> yeah. We, no, we both just get quiet for a second. Oh no. What does like, that mean? <laughs> does that does that mean I um with my green lights and drinking my uh Mount Dew, it should be in a Mount Dew bottle and I should we have should a sponsorship? Have, I would think we should start looking for a sponsorship for the show. I would think that people will be, be, be uh, after that uh <laughs> after that pretty quickly after the first show airs you know <laughs> you, you'll just have to get yourself some green lights also Clint. <laughs> and then we'll be in the money <laughs> I, I, I can find some i, I want to do lighting i want to do the red blue lighting that people do i always think that looks really cool well uh, todd but, did blue lighting a couple yeah, weeks todd, ago on pontificators yeah. but then he didn't do it again yeah, it's and I mean it look it looks good when you do that. So I just I need to put I need to put a little bit more effort than in than I. Well, and I want to get like uh, I got the one of my banners back here, but I really want to get uh, like a full on 
pirate queen banner and then get a, a blue bombshell banner oh, is yeah. uh, what I want to do. And I think that'll kind of look cool. I mean, the, my studio otherwise is just a freaking mess. So it's like nobody really <laughs> wants nobody really wants to look at that. But wait, wait, you're talking about a mess. <laughs> <laughs> when that's the running joke with Mike, no matter which room I'm in, I I get asked if I'm in a storage closet. Yeah. <laughs> Art, Art did like to get on you about that. <laughs> he's, he's probably going, Rob, you've you you've been in comics 30 years. You didn't you didn't make more money to have a at least a nice looking studio? <laughs> I mean it can be nice. It can just be that you haven't cleaned it recently. So <laughs> dude, if I pan, wait, actually I think I can see it on the camera. There's a litter box. And it's my, oh. yeah, there's a litter box in the corner off to the, if you're looking I mean, at the, you have, if you're you're looking looking at the square, it's the bottom right hand of the square. You can see one of two litter boxes that are set up. So you got to have something for the kitties. I mean, it, it's better having the litter box there than not having the litter box <laughs> there, right? Dude, and that's just how I am, man. I, I live large and in charge with this, uh, this business. You know, um, I once uh, was talking to uh, Mark Bagley, and he said that when he moved into well, this was during the boom, and yeah. he got a new house built, and he was up in uh, the mountains, I think the oh, Blue nice. Ridge Mountains, and it had three levels, and his accountant's looking over his expenditures and the the money he made, and he goes, "Okay, Mark, uh, this is great, no problem." But what you're going to have to do for your business expenses is one of those floors of your new house has it's, to be all studio. It's all it's entirely your studio, yeah. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> they write it off by percentage that you use of the house. So yes, yep, yep. So I imagine he must have an amazing studio. Oh which, yeah, you know. All right, so yeah. Tim Townsend's a studio. It's pretty kick-ass too. I uh, that was his old house, so I imagine in his new house it's even it's even cooler. But uh, uh, Tim is a big he was a big fan of you know those like the comic Bowen statues. Oh yeah, uh, he had like every one of those on a glass in the glass shelf casing that was right. one side of the one side of the wall of the studio. His studio was very you know long and kind of a little narrow. Um, which was pretty damn impressive when you'd walk in and you'd see all those, you know, like, Oh dude. And then he had a couple different, he had a little, um, love seat, leather seat in the Art. corner to chill and look at stuff and check out stuff. And then he had a couple different tables with different things going on. So he had, he had a, he had a pretty cool, he had a nice, pretty cool. nice setup. Mm -hmm. So Art, that, that, Art, Art was nice enough to, to swim oh, by. Hey, Art. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we didn't miss you. It was a little while back, but Hey Art, uh, Ra or Andrew's got a question there. No, no, I did not watch it yet. Um, to be honest, it's um, I don't know if we're my wife and I are going to go now because we heard about the uh, rocket yeah, the animal movie. stuff is yeah. I mean, we could easily fast forward through that. Um, yeah, if we're watching it at home. If you're and, animal, if you're animal people, I wouldn't yeah. recommend it. My wife was not a fan. Yeah, and I think if she had known uh, a that it was going to be like that ahead of time that, yeah, I probably would have just uh, maybe watch it myself or just waited after the fact is, yeah, it, it's, if you're an animal person at all. It's, there's some, there's some, uh, some rough stuff in there for you. And, so that's. And, yeah. Yep. And streaming is becoming as uh movie theaters sell less tickets. Everything goes to streaming even sooner. Yeah. So oh yeah, we're, we're big fans of streaming. I mean, if you, you can stream at home and you know get takeout, and it's it's half to a third of the price of what a movie theater is going to charge for you oh, know yeah. dinner, um, you know, dude, it's unless it's something really cool, right? Yeah, it's we're something not even you don't want to wait yeah. for. But yeah, yeah, this this to me this was odd because I mean Marvel are like, and I mean the Guardians have been for the most part relatively family friendly and kid friendly movies. Yeah. And then to go this hard with the animal part of it, I get what they were trying to do, but 
it's going to be a lot for some people to take. And it, especially not having any awareness that it's coming and getting it just kind of dropped on you when you're, when you're just expecting a lighthearted, you know, superhero movie. And then it's like, there's like a real dark, dark bit in it. And it's like, whoa, you know, yeah, there, like there are a lot of people that's, it's gonna really kind of take them out of the movie and just not be happy about it. I think. Yeah. Like there's, there's no real positive upside to that. No, I you don't know? think so either. There's, there's no upside to that. There's, there's, um, if he gets his revenge, there's, um, there's, you know, there's the payoff for the story, but right. it's also, it's not John Wick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like and the thing is <laughs> when you're going into John Wick, everybody kind of knows what to expect and what's coming. So yeah. it's not going to catch you so off guard with mm -hmm. this. Yeah. I think it's it, any, everybody who's seen it, I think it really caught everybody off guard. They weren't expecting it to be as, uh, as yeah. dark as they went with it. Yeah. Like what's, yeah, like like I said, there's there's no upside to that, you know. Mm. It's just like, you know, what? I so yeah, um, because we were going to we right. uh, we uh, to be honest, we were going we, we yeah. were going to go watch it, and then uh, I downloaded a bunch of movies on torrent sites, and uh -huh. I was like, hey, look at look at all these movies we have. And then, no, 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 you didn't. <laughs> and then I did it again for movies that just came out like a week ago. Right. So I'm like, D do we even need that? You know, like, yeah, we, we, we can just watch stuff. We can just stop watch we, stuff at home. We wait a couple more weeks, and I'll I'll get it for the price of uh, burning a DVD. Yeah. No, and I mean that's the thing is like, there are so many options now. People <laughs> yeah. are gonna pick and choose, and if you do get that bad word word of mouth. And then that's what I'm wondering is how much that actually did hurt Guardians with with yeah. that word of mouth about the animal scenes, mm -hmm. especially when you're counting on kind of a family friendly audience movie. And you and got little kids like, crying. It doesn't, it doesn't take much nowadays with social media to like lose that audience yeah. when you're not giving people what they're looking for. Yeah. So can you imagine those scenes while? your um little girl or your little son yeah. is eating chicken fingers yeah <laughs> <laughs> that you paid like twelve dollars for yeah and then you're like yeah no it's you own a uh, four dollar drink <laughs> no it's uh i i could definitely see that being uh one of the reasons that i mean it didn't do as good as the second movie and yeah. I mean, the second movie wasn't this monster hit that it was, should have been that hard to, for to beat, it, yeah. yeah, to beat. And the fact that it couldn't even do what the second movie did, and uh, yeah, I just, I mean, Marvel's just—it's been a lot of missteps, a lot of people saying that the new stuff isn't anywhere close to what the old stuff was, and I agree. I mean, you compare these movies to what was happening. 10 years ago and i mean they've kind of went off a cliff on uh on the quality of the movies and especially the storytelling um and i mean it's pretty evident you can look at the box office numbers and see the decline and well, i'm i'm gonna blame it all on loki, loki? I, think, I think loki really just shit on the the first the first fa four phases of uh marvel they, oh, shit that, on, they shit on all of it. They shit on the, from Captain America, oh, Iron Man, saying, all yeah. the way to, in, you know, and, yeah. um, and I think that was just, I think that was all ego. That was yeah. all ego as writer's ego. Like, Hey, we're better than the comic books. We're better than what they did before. We're going to do like all this in, insane CGI and effects that you've never seen before, and it's gonna yeah. be awesome. And you're like, dude, Loki was boring, and you shit out everything. So, you know, yep. screw off. And, and to be honest, if I was a movie studio like Marvel Studios, as soon as COVID hit, and I saw that it was serious because of the government's shutting stuff down, right. I would go, 
hey, you know those contracts we have with AMC and Regal and all those guys? Get us out of those contracts as fast as possible. We're not even going to release them. I would immediately give given up on the movie theaters. Oh, I just said, went straight to yeah. streaming for everything. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I would have and, said it's it's over. If these people are going to be locked down for a year, right? That's going to be you are now going to teach the entire populace to stay at home and watch stuff on with streaming and watch stuff at home on their and everyone has because the price of a widescreen TV is so cheap now. Oh yeah. Almost everyone has a big widescreen TV at what 720 yeah. or 1080 or 4K. And, and it's it's actually surprising that that didn't that is that isn't what happened, you know, that I mean the movie theaters took a huge hit, but yeah. I'm surprised that it wasn't even more so with well, like Well no it's ongoing because they've raised their prices so much. Because the economy took a hit and inflation went yeah. way up, uh, and movie theaters had that you couldn't pay people minimum wage to go work at the movie theater, uh, we still haven't seen the full effects. Right. I think movie theaters are dead. I think they're just they're like a lot of industry in America. It's they're dead man walking. I think oh, it's you, over. You think for it's movies. still? You think it's the ball is still about to drop on theaters? Yes. But- yeah, the, and I the, think that's why Guardians of the Galaxy, I think why a lot of movies they expected to do a lot better because mm-hmm. movie theaters have had to raise their prices so much. Now, like, hey, we definitely went and we watched Maverick. Oh, yeah, and, everybody watched Maverick. Like, yeah. that's, that's the hope, I think, that movie theaters have. But Hollywood doesn't want to do that. Like, they don't, like... You I can't do that once a week. You can't have a monster movie every week. Yeah. But I don't think Hollywood wants to make those movies. That movie, that movie is one hundred percent Tom Cruise making yeah. that movie and getting it done, kn- knowing what audience is like, getting the screenwriters, getting the director. Like Hollywood does not want to make movies that play to Middle America and play to any kind of patriotism with no agenda. Yeah, they, they want, hate they that. Like, that is, yeah, yep, that is the opposite of what they want to do with yeah. movies. And, uh, I mean, you would think at some point they'd have to answer to stockholders or something, but yeah, they, they don't want to make money. Those are the movies that, that, uh, the movie buying ticket buying audience, they want to see those movies because there aren't any of those movies anymore. So, well, yeah, it's, it just baffles me. Movie theaters are not going to be able to hold on with one Maverick a year. No, you know, no, they need one great movie a year. Yeah. They're they're in, they're in trouble. Well, and especially if the Marvel movies continue to falter. Just, yes, because mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think Guardians of the Galaxy is going to have any legs. No, you know, like you can have a you can have a big opening weekend and still, compared to like what the the production and the marketing and everything is, you can still have a loss for a big movie, even if it's got the the big opening weekend just because of all the other uh, expenses that these movies have nowadays, especially Disney ones. So uh, Andrew also said that it's not just about the, the, the poor little animals going through the, the experiment scenes, but it's also that they, they humanize animals. Right. Um, I have, I honestly have no problem with that. No, and the thing that, I, I don't you know, have, and, and kids. I mean, Disney's always done that. Yep, yeah. humanizing the animals, that. but then it, it like it almost makes it worse. <laughs> is what I would say. <laughs> well, we always yeah. think because animals are on um, they're on instinct. They're not. They're not trying to, you know, they're not trying to sweep your legs to to get your job or, uh, you know, uh, screw you over for an extra dollar. Yeah, you know they're in they're innocent compared to people. So exactly when you when you, when you torture them in CGI with characters yeah, that it's... we already love, that just makes us angry and wants us to burn down the movie theater. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it was uh, or it not was... come back, which is yeah. exactly what's happening. Yeah, you know, isn't there another big CGI superhero movie coming up soon? I thought I saw an like a uh, trailers, and I'm like, that's already coming out. Like. Is it June or something? I think not, Fla- I May. think Flash comes out in June. That's the next. I mean, that's is the it big June hope. or July? 
Yeah, that's the big hope for Warner Brothers is Flash. So I don't know if that's the one you're thinking of or that might be the only movie in the next few months that we actually go to the theater to watch is a flash. Right. Movie. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I understand why, like, I mean the summer, like, yeah, I'm interested in seeing the flash just because of what they're doing with, with bringing Keaton back as Batman. Yes. Like that was, mm-hmm. that was smart. Like Keaton still got it. Like he's mm-hmm. still, he still can pull off that role with the gravitas and like make it entertaining. Cause I mean, you can't, I mean, I don't, I think right away they understood like Ezra Miller is not going to like be able to pull a whole movie for us. No, he's, he's too much of a train wreck. Yeah. And, he, and he's a, no he's one a wants bit, him to pull off a whole movie. Yeah. He's a bit role player. He's yeah. not like a superstar. He's weird and quirky. Yeah. He's yeah. weird and quirky. Yeah. yeah it's he's, also, the, he's the goofy sidekick. So once you get Keaton in there, that solves that problem. And then what I'm curious about is the whole athlete Keaton aspect of it. Is mm-hmm, it multiverse? Mm-hmm. I can't. I, I gotta assume that it's not like they're not from two the same timeline and just a young and an old version of each other. I can't think because I mean, quite frankly, I mean, Affleck's kind of an old Batman already. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's true, and you know the body types aren't even similar. Like, no, yeah, they don't. They, <laughs> they don't look like remotely a like what difference. I think. Have you seen the memes of of Affleck of Ben Affleck walking around and he just yeah. looks like the most miserable son of a bitch on the planet? Oh yeah, there can you be that rich and that good looking? And exactly, that's like, and oh, I wish sad. I had all your problems, Ben. Life's got to be just <laughs> such a bitch. Like my ex girlfriend <laughs> is Anna De Armas, who's gorgeous. And then I broke up with her because I got tired of having sex all the time. So I went back to (laughs) J-Lo. Like, every time you see Affleck, he looks like the most miserable bastard on the planet. It is so, it's hilarious. I like, I love it. I love that he's so miserable looking. Well, here's the thing. I've heard that being an actor is one of the most boring things you can possibly have to do. Like it, it probably, can be, it, probably it can does. be excruciating. So, can you imagine if um, you're making so much money you can't say no? Oh right, yeah. So, in that lifestyle, like there's no waiting in at the airport for first class. You're right, flying no. private, but if you it's fly private, private jet, yeah, it, it costs. The costs are so high first that you, of all, have, you can't get JLo's fat ass into first class, no, so you need no. a private jet. Yeah. So you need to keep making the money because you don't – like um, I've heard rich people say that the next level isn't staying at home and not having to do anything. The next level is having a private jet so you don't even have to deal with the airlines. Yeah. Like that's yeah. the next – like that's what they consider rich. They consider right, rich yeah. when you have the private jet, not you know, you're flying first class and you could literally quit your job whatever you wanted. Um, no, that's so, probably, that's probably still considered middle class for that. So. Yeah, they call. I think. Um, uh, oh, I, I'm forgetting the guy, but he's a comedian. He said he considers himself super middle class. He says there's <laughs> no private jet, so he's he he thinks because of his TV career and a couple of movies he did, uh, he's super middle class. Yeah, that um, makes sense. But so you're Ben Affleck, and you're realizing that. You can have this amazing life, but this amazing life also means you have to sit on set for 16 hours a day to shoot in front of a camera for 15 minutes. Right, like, yeah. Or they're going to strap you up in a, a harness and CGI, CGI the shit out of it, and you get to pretend for yeah. 15 minutes. And you're just like – so you literally what you are is, is half your life or more is you live in a trailer just like the poorest of people in America. Oh, Your yeah. Your trailer yeah. just happens to be on a movie set. Yeah. You're still living in a trailer. It, yeah, like, <laughs> whatever your dream job is, is once you get your dream job, it's like, oh, but it's still a job. It's like you still yeah. you still have, like, everybody's got, like, maybe something they're like, oh, if I could just do this, yeah. everything would be perfect. Like, my dream job would be doing this. Well, then you get there and you do it for six months and you're like, oh, yeah, I mean, this is good, but, <laughs> but you know what? Be great, there, there's but... something better than this. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jim Lee said that in an interview. He oh, said, he? 
he said that no um he said after because i asked him what's it like to be jim lee and he said he goes it's pretty amazing for the first hour <laughs> and he said after that it, it's work just like any other job <laughs> yeah yeah and i think that's the thing is like oh yeah you could run dc comics but then after yeah after you've been there for you know three four six months it's like, and you got like editors and like, there's this problem and that problem. Yeah, yeah. And you're just putting out fires. Yeah. You're putting out fires. You're, you're dealing with egos. Oh, so-and-so is mad about this and this. And, and I'm guessing it's a lot of dealing with egos and like patting certain creators on the back and like, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, that's right. That's, you shouldn't have had to deal with that. Like yeah. I'll take care of that for you kind of stuff. And, then you go back to the editor and be like, all right, let's, let's make sure we kiss so-and-so's ass this week because, you know, he's upset about this and this and this. And, and, and so if he does that all week and then he goes home to his big house, um, the whole time he's home, he's also thinking about what he has to deal with on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> so. And that's, that's not to mention anybody's home life because anybody's home life can be stressful too. So, <laughs> Yeah, it yeah, you're not even guaranteed that getting home is gonna like get you to escape your problems. No, no, because he's got a lot of kids. Because yeah. of and I mean, I'm not talking about Jim specifically, but just no. any any kind of work yeah. situation. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not like you get to escape. You escape everything, and everything is you know you're you're sitting on a fluffy cloud all weekend, and then yeah. you have to go, oh, like, oh, but I gotta these, go back to work. Yep, all these cliches are cliches for a reason, but the old uh, uh, walk a mile in uh, somebody's mm -hmm. shoes, you know, it's like that's that's a cliche for a reason because it's true. It's like yeah, you think so-and-so's got it great, and then you realize if you spent any time dealing with what they're dealing with, it's like, oh, all right, you know what? My life's not looking so bad right now. Yeah. If everything was uh, great, and we could see things that way, then we'd still be watching black and white TVs. Well, that, yeah. You know, we're, we're sitting on the floor and they were like furniture. You know yeah. what I mean? No one would, no one would be like, Oh, well maybe I could do better than this black and white TV. Maybe we can, I can, you know, invent color TV or you know, capitalism. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. And think of how many people it took yeah. for those inventions and that technology to move forward, to go from black and white to color. So that's a lot of unhappy people in their jobs yep. trying to get better jobs. Exactly. So. But that's how things get better. Yes. Speaking of better, we need to see superiors. You've been oh, drawing yeah. Superman, but oh, we're, okay. we've, we're at an hour and no one has seen the superior. Campaign. All right. Let's do the superiors. I, I inked that pretty quick, though. I mean, it looks like I something. I, I tried to it, do it as fast as I could, but at least it looks like something. So Andrew won't be able to yell at me tomorrow that I didn't draw anything on the stream. So now it angers it angers me when we go close up on the lines not being nice and perfect. But you're also trying to ink it as fast as possible. And when well, you shrink well, it down to this size, it doesn't look so bad. Oh yeah, no, this, it's this is sloppy as hell. Yes. The, yeah, like especially the shadow lines underneath his neck. The the, the neck shadow lines. That, that's just irritating. That makes me. You. Makes me angry. <laughs> <laughs> but see, look, look at look at how good it looks back here. I know, I know that, which makes me even angrier. <laughs> Did you ever hear when I talked about the? Um, I was at um, I was in uh, Kelly Corvisi's office, and I had just done an I had done inks on half of an issue of X Factor over Mel Ruby and Hack Shack Studio. Oh, I remember Mel Ruby. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember. The book hadn't come out yet, and Kelly is showing me the other half of the book, probably because I got behind on the schedule, so that's why Hack Shack had to do it. So he's probably like, hey, look what Hack Shack did. And I remember looking at the originals going, oh, I kicked these guys' ass. Mm -hmm. You know, like I have way more variety of line and bounce to it. When the book came out, I couldn't tell which pages, pages I had inked and which pages <laughs> Hack Shack, and it made me so sad because I realized all the extra time I put into those pages – met nothing in the book met, met absolutely nothing to the printed book and and that's that's the that's the the i mean and i mean every inker every inker well andrew you might want to plug your ears for this but like <laughs> you put in that fine line work and then a colorist i mean and a colorist might have whatever reason or maybe they're a deadline or something but 
some colorist comes in and just like annihilates all the line work that you did. <laughs> no, I'm not saying like, you know, every colorist does that, but I, I would say that it, it has happened, you know, and <laughs> to know all, all, to know all that fine line work that you, you put in and that it just kind of gets obliterated. Uh, look at art. We kicked Rob's ass. Yeah. You, you did because I imagine you guys were able to turn around that other half of that book crazy fast compared to how long it took for me to ink the first half of the book or whatever part of the book it was. And oh yeah, or someone puts balloons over it too. <laughs> I worked on a Malibu book once. I only did one issue for him where they sent the pages to the letterer, and this was just when they were switching over to digital or digital lettering the letterer obviously got the job and didn't know how to letter on the boards so when i got the artwork it was pencils and then it was word balloons pasted onto the pages and i still had to ink them over and the this, pencil oh so he had pasted the word balloons before it had even been inked yeah because he was supposed to letter it it by hand but he right. wasn't a he wasn't a letterer by hand guy. He was a computer guy. Oh, so, and oh, this is one oh. I use French curve on almost everything. Like yeah. I could do, I was doing shoulders and outlines with a French curve and a pen nib. Um, and I remember going, I I told my editor, I'm like, uh, I am tearing up these word balloons <laughs> as I try to oh, eat yeah. them. A quill, a quill is going to rip right through anything pasted on there. Oh, dude, the French curve, because I'm running the French curve across the whole freaking page, back and forth. And what it, I was careful enough that it was just the points. The points all got destroyed, or a yeah. lot of the points got pulled oh, up and destroyed. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I think they probably just had production have to go in and clean stuff go up. Go white out and re retouch it or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. But I just remember, like, come on, dude. If you, at that time, if you're a letterer, and obviously he told the editor that he could letter on the boards, and then he just thought he was going to be able to, you know, pace so it he up was going to do, do balloons and, and, and freehand lettering on it. That's what he, he was trying to, to sell himself as. I think he just sold himself as a letterer, but the whole time oh, okay. he did it on the computer. And so when I mean, he got the original, point, wasn't, I'm, I'm just guessing, I'm, I'm guessing at the time frame, there couldn't have been a lot of dudes out there hand lettering Three. books anymore. No, no, no. At this time, this was Malibu. This was, oh, this Malibu. Was, okay, so this, this was, was okay. one of my first books I ever did. Oh, okay, so this, this is was, where most this people early on at Malibu. Malibu, so it didn't have the yeah. big production aspect like Marvel and DC had either. Yeah, this was when people were still mostly hand lettering a comic book page. No, okay. And he was a, he was already doing computer lettering. Yep, and he's like, oh, sure, I he'll that. Well, and then every freelancer is going to be like. When the editor asks you something to do something you don't know how to do, oh yeah, sure, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, he must have shit when he saw the original show up at his house and there were pencils and they hadn't been inked yet. He yeah. must have been like, "Uh oh, this isn't supposed to happen." Like, no. if anything, he had been pasting up his word balloons over finished pencils and inks, so yeah. no one would really. Well, say and, and, well that's the, the other thing is, like, if they had just had you ink it and then him come in with his paste stuffs. Like that that's not how it, it was done that well yeah it just wasn't set up that way yeah no it was set up where it goes from pencils to lettering and then yeah. it goes inking because that's how it was it was still being done at the time yeah and then it saves the it saves the inker not having to ink those word balloon spots so yeah all that background that lettering yeah. covered up yeah. <laughs> well here uh let me uh let me uh shoot up the superiors trailer here i haven't played that in a little bit Thank <laughs> you. 
Superiors. Dude, well, that's, I wanted to add more jazz hands to the trailer. No. But the, I just no, couldn't no I couldn't figure out where uh oh that was a nice <laughs> picture of Scarlett Johansson there. Yeah, yeah. She used to be smoking hot. Oh yeah. The, the Black Widow days, Iron yeah. Man 2. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't know. She's still probably nice, nice on the eyes, but like that, uh, that Elizabeth Olsen has kind of done, done well to take, take her spot. Cause she's, she's not too bad to look at either. The, the Marvel universe, they, uh, they chose their, their lady uh, actresses pretty. Mm-hmm. And I mean, uh, for that matter, I mean, you might not like a Brie Larson's personality, which it seems like a lot of people don't, but she's a lovely girl. It's oh just, yeah. It's yeah. Just, she's, why does she hate old? Why does she hate old white guys? <laughs> I, you know, that doesn't bother me as much as her weird hippie chick character that she played early on as as a teenager. So she was in like um, uh, uh shit. What was that movie? Um, they did twenty one, and then they did twenty two. Um, oh, oh, I know what you're talking about with um. Yeah, the, you and I, you and I are really good at uh, yeah, <laughs> half uh, remembering uh, Jump Street, 20, Jump Street. 21 Jump Street, and then twenty two Jump Street, and yeah, uh, uh, Seth. She was yes, and um, um, the guy from Magic Mike. So I mean, th- those were funny movies, though. Yeah, yeah I forgot yeah. that she was in those movies. Yeah, she looks totally different. Yeah, like she's had a boob job or something. Something she and she looked like way frumpier or something. Like she wasn't. She yeah, realized I, she had to work out for Captain Marvel, and then well, she decided and, to keep that character. Yeah, I think she had a boob job, and I think she had all work done on her face. Yeah, yeah. Because like, yeah. if you if you look at her now and you look at her from those movies, it doesn't look really close to the same girl. No, um, and you can see that they attempted because when Captain Marvel came out, she was also in the first Kong movie. That they were trying to turn her into a big star, like a oh. you know box office action yeah. type character, and um, but then she wasn't getting along with anybody on Captain Marvel or the, the yeah. Marvel Studios it, cast and stuff. Like so. you don't you don't hear you don't hear great like you 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 can see the camaraderie between the earlier cast, you yeah. know the guys in Scarlett Johansson and. You know all the Chris's like in in uh, uh, Robert Downey Jr., uh, Elizabeth Olsen. Like you, you saw like a friendship, a camaraderie. You didn't get that feeling once Brie Larson showed up there. Hot oh, kitty. Yeah, so, it's Odie. It's, Odie. It's short, short for Odin son. Odin son. We are nerds. Nice, exactly. <laughs> and, and he is a monster. Yeah, <laughs> he's a total monster. My That's wife his wanted to. My wife wanted to name our cats uh, Thor and Loki so bad, but I was like Loki's a dick. I like that's a good kitty. I'm not thinking, I'm not naming him Loki. He should have been Loki. We should have named him Loki. Oh, he is a little bit of a yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a total. Yeah, he's a he's a total monster. <laughs> yeah, especially when he was a kitten, we realized way too late he had um the the dining room chairs. It wasn't leather. But it was a type of like leather. Yep. Um, he had chewed the oh. um, the cushion, the the, yeah. the the leather material off of all the dining room chairs. Oh my god! It scratched him up and chewed him up. Yeah. Uh, so he completely just destroyed four very expensive dining room chairs. Oh just, boy. Just because he could. Yeah. No, and I mean <laughs> when, you, when they're when they're chewers, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. It's no, like, he still does. He's just chewing trying plastic to, bags and trying stuff. to keep everything away from it is basically it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we're we're already over an hour here. Uh superiors. This is oh. the last weekend for the first 30 days. So um it is the the 30 day closeout on Sunday night. So uh, if you haven't checked out the Spears yet, I've got the link uh, for this and uh, Death Raider in the description below here. Definitely click these campaigns and check them out. And uh, yeah, I almost went through the whole show and didn't sh- see. I told you, it's like I, I need to show campaigns right out of the gate, or otherwise I get uh, I get sidetracked easily. Uh, limited uh, 
limited span of attention i got <laughs> <didn't feel laughs> well isn't that with most comic book artists we it's like we, most of us are ocd we're not ocd yeah. but um hdad or HDAD. you're like focus on one thing but if you're not focused on that the rest of it just kind of Yes, which is why we can do comic books because it's yep. an eleven by seventeen sheet of paper in front of us. Yep. And you, you focus all your attention on this one spot and you get it done, and mm -hmm. the rest of the world is whizzing by you. And uh, but, dude, this work is great. I mean, there's so much work in the, the figure work and the storytelling and the action stuff going on. Um, dude, this is amazing. You. This is the opposite of what Marvel and DC do now. They're gonna yeah, do like headshots yep. and you know. Yeah, no, and this is yeah. not talking heads. This is like one of this is the one one of the the slower scenes in the book, and like somebody's getting annihilated in the last panel. So yeah, so like it's I I keep the action moving. You get to know the characters and the team and everything as you go, but it's kind of on the run. And uh, you know, I kind of wanted to keep the book. Um, there's no there's no slow spots. You 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 get to know everybody as you go through the adventure. But uh, yeah, it's it's nonstop action from front page to last, forty eight pages, full story, full color, and uh, yeah, it's um, I'm excited about it. I'm excited for people to see it. Um, I hope more people jump on. I want to do more of this, um, uh, more of the uh, superiors, and uh, more with these characters. So I really uh, kind of hope it takes off. And uh, anybody that uh, checks it out, I really do appreciate it. So. Are you gonna? Um, so it's forty-eight pages. Is that 40 pa 48 pages of story? Yeah. Or are you doing any? You're not doing any like pinups of other projects. Well, and there doing? there is. Uh, I got two supplemental books going with it. Okay. Um, one is the Superiors Early Visions, and okay, so I've been working on. Yeah, I've been working on this book for a long time. So I've got a lot of artwork that it was early versions of this story. Um, that I wanted to like put in this book and it's like, yeah, uh, earlier versions of this book, pinups, artwork. So I've got a 30 page book of that. And then another, uh, who's who book. That's going to be a lot of pinups, a lot of these variant covers that aren't, uh, the main covers on the book, a lot of the fun, um, uh, kind of uh, homage stuff, the kind of is different it, is eras. it listed? Because I'm you, you mentioned that before, but I I don't do I is it on? Yeah, yeah. Let right me now? let me let me pull it up here. So I like to play stupid because I am stupid, and I think it helps <laughs> sell the projects too. Yeah, no, it, you're right, you're like, right. So so like um, at the seventy five dollar level here, you can get um, the main the main book plus the early visions book, plus the who's who book. And you can get oh, okay. it with, with any of the variant covers. So you can, if you like one of the variants better, you can get it with <laughs> any of the variants. And then there is an option to get all the variants and the early visions and the who, who, who's who. So I try to I try to make kind of all the options available, mm -hmm. you know, depending on which covers you want and which supplemental books you want. And do you available. have a, a, a spot down here where it explains exactly what the visions book is and how many pages and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. It, it kind of talks about it talks about I've been working on this book for over twenty years, so uh, <laughs> yeah. So so there are different different versions of this, different styles that I was drawing in at the at the time. So um, I think I posted a little bit of it on Twitter the other day where you could see an early version of a page and then the way the page uh finally ended up so i'll be yeah. back in two seconds okay no problem so yeah it uh it just uh kind of gives uh all, all the different variants and all the the different options with the uh, supplemental books so um depending on what you're looking for you can uh, get all those options but again uh the first 30 days will be closing down uh sunday so if you haven't uh, haven't had a chance to check this out yet, uh, definitely go check it out at Indiegogo. You will need the direct link um, just because uh, it uh, you can't find it in the comic section. So the direct link uh, below uh, in the description will take you right to the superiors, and you can check it out. So there you remember, go. Remember, remember when I told you that he's a monster? Oh, is he getting into something already? He was in the background, and I saw saw him moving around. If I leave my whiteout water in my ink water cup um uncovered 
yeah. he will drink it. Oh no, okay, yeah, that's you don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like why? Well, I imagine with the whiteout rinse cup water does smell bad, and I know yeah. animals like that. Yeah, because it, it's you know they they had to take all the chemicals out of it, and now it's all a bunch of organic stuff. Oh, so okay. it, will, it will start to stink fast. But I'm just like, are you kidding me? Yeah, no. <laughs> Either way, it doesn't need to be in there. <laughs> Not drinking that stuff. No, that, yeah. it can't. It can't be good for his, his system at all. Yeah. So. Well, for a first show, you know, we went an hour and a half now. So wow. I mean, yeah, it kind of kind of blew by there. But appreciate everybody uh, in the chat uh, showing up tonight. Again, uh, if you're watching this on the rewind, I'm trying to build the channel. So. Uh, if you can hit that like button and hit subscribe and uh, uh, help me out, help me build this channel. I appreciate it. Hail CG, hail to the chat, hail to, to Art and Andrew and Randy and all the rest of you that showed up tonight. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Oh and, yeah. Uh, everybody, uh, go enjoy the rest of your Thursday night. Uh, it's it's hot out here, so I'm gonna actually go sit out in the deck and kind of listen to the crickets and the frogs and the birds uh, sing for a little bit, but. Uh, uh, thanks. Oh, sorry. Back in my head. <laughs> thanks to Rob. No, I just, like all of a sudden, like, I don't know if there's a bug or something, but yeah, thank, thanks to Rob. Thank you for uh, being on the show with me here. You know, it, uh, it's fun BSing with you and, uh, it's, uh, always good talking comics. So, oh dude, it's a blast. And then anybody who, you know, they're like, hey, Rob, you don't really post videos on your own channel. I'm like, hey, man, I'm on everybody else's channel. So <laughs> you get a good idea of uh, who I am. And if you want to uh, you want to back Death Raider or not from my personality and, you know, my love of comics. Yeah, it, yep. I don't need a friggin' YouTube channel. So. Yeah, well, and it's better. You're better <laughs> off making the rounds, too, and just like hanging out with everybody because, you know, all those interconnections, all those ties, you know, you'll get different backers from different different channels and stuff and it really really does help you down the road so i, I learn more yep I, yeah. I can ask people questions i i will see their campaigns we we all talk about different things uh, i learned a lot more doing that than sitting it you know in front of a camera and explaining to people my uh my interpretation of what disney's doing right now at Marvel. yeah you know, yeah, and it, it does with you and get your feedback. So. Yeah, there is a ton to learn. Like, yeah, running these campaigns, it's like, yeah, you can look at somebody else's and like, oh, I've got this, and it's like, no, there's there's lots of different things that work and don't work. And yeah, the more the more people you talk to, the more you see, the more you experience, it really does help in the long run. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, I think we'll wrap it up for tonight, and uh, we'll shoot for next Thursday again. This worked out pretty well, and we'll yeah, just kind of fun. Yep. We'll just kind of build from here. Thanks to everybody for showing up tonight. Thank you, Rob. And everybody have a great night. See you later.